Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this kinetic type animation in Adobe After Effects. This is a video from the Pixrate series. So with a huge shout out to Pixrate, let's begin. All right, so let's start with making a new composition. I'm going to call it base design. The width and height is set on 1500. The frame rate is set on 24 frames per second and on 3D renderer section make sure you are working on classic 3D. Now let's hit OK. Now the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to create my main text. I'm going to call it motion. For the font I'm using the Berlin Sans. So let's go towards the line tab and align it to the middle. Alright, now let's create shapes from it. Now. Unlike the previous videos where I used the Cinema 4D renderer in order to achieve the extrude effect, this time I'm going to use the Minimax effect. And I already have a video where I explained everything in detail, but for this video I'm just going to quickly recap. So if I change the radius parameter, as you see nothing will happen because we need to change the channel from the color to alpha and color. Now if I increase it, as you see, we will have a border vertically and horizontally around the motion letter. So I'm just going to change the duration to just vertical and that is good. But one major problem with the Minimax effect is that we cannot control the position or rotation of the effect separately. So to fix that problem, we need to add a transform effect. But even we add the transform effect, if I change the anchor point or the position, as you see, it will just change everything together. So to fix that problem, uh, if I set the radius, for example, to 20, we can remove the same value from the radius from the position and anchor point. For example, now that the radius parameter is set on 20, we can remove the same number from the Y value of the anchor point. As you see right now, the, the long shadow effect shifted 20 pixels down. So we can use an expression to sort of fix that problem. So to do that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to hold Alt and then I'm going to click on the anchor point and I'll delete everything. And I'm going to start with a open bracket value and open bracket zero. So this basically means the value of the X and then I'm going to divide them by adding a comma and again value one. So this means our Y position in here. And then I'm going to um, set the minus and I'm going to pick it to the radius. So basically this expression means that X and Y minus everything that is in here. So right now I didn't close the bracket. So I need to do that. Okay. Now, if I increase the, for example, radius to 50, as you see, it removes 50 parameter for the Y value. Now, if I change the direction to horizontal, it will remove from the X value. So that is fine. Let's set the radius to 150. Now we need to do the same thing for the rotation, except the rotation, we cannot change this um, property alone. We need to add another transform effect and we need to push it above the minimax effect and the way we can fix the rotation is that if we add a number to the rotation for example minus 10 we need to add the same positive number to the uh, first rotation property in order to fix that issue so we can use an expression so let's just sit let's just set the rotation on zero i'm going to use the alt again and then i'm going to use the pick whip tool to pick whip these rotations together. However, I'm just going to add a minus before the expression. All right, now everything is fixed. So I can now control the rotation. Now we need to fix the color. So to do that, I'm going to add a fill effect. But as you see, when I added the fill effect, the layer took the fill effect too. So we can add a CC composite to fix that issue. All right, let's just change the color to white. Now it is time to animate our uh, animation. So I'm just gonna set a keyframe on radius and on one second, I'm gonna set another keyframe by pressing U. So I'm gonna set the first value to zero. And also I'm gonna add a position keyframe. So let's just set the both layers on 750 so that is just the center 
and I'm just going to push them for about 100 units. So 850 seems to be fine. And we can even stylize this text further by adding another transform effect. And then I can set the skew number to a number such as like minus 10 can be fine. However, we can just adjust the rotation property. Okay, that's good. And now let's create another uh, composition and uh, let's call it offset. And what I'm going to do for the next step is that I'm going to bring the base design and I want to create an offset animation between each letter of this motion word. So to do that, I'm going to add the essential graphics panel. So as I basically show you in the dope effect, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, firstly set the primary composition into the base design. And with that selected, I'm going to add the uh, opacity value of each letter into our essential graphics panel. So make sure you are selecting the transform property. All right. Now here's for the I and here's for the O and lastly for the N. Now we don't need this panel anymore. Let's just delete it. Now if I get back to the offset composition, as you see, I have an essential properties panel in here. Or if you have the Adobe After Effects 2024 installed, you can have access to it in the properties panel in here. So now what I need to do is that I'm going to duplicate this letter six times um, because we have six letters and then I'm going to rename them. All right, now I'm going to use the essential properties panel and I'm going to hide the unnecessary layers. So here's going to be our M and then I'm going to do uh, the same thing quickly for the other letters as well. A few moments later. Now we can easily add the offset by going into time and adding the time remapping. So I'm going to delete the last keyframe and I'm going to set two keyframes one for the loop at the two seconds and one at the one second where our animation finished at the base design stage. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to turn these keyframes into easy ease and then I'm going to adjust the graph like this. So we'll have this animation for the M letter. That's good. And then I'm going to copy it and I'm, I'm going to paste it for the other layers as well. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to create an offset between the uh, layers. And that's perfect. And now let's just add a loop out expression and let's copy the expression and paste it for the other layers as well. Great. Now what we can do for the next step is that I'm going to create another composition and I'm going to call it the stack. So basically what we can do is that we can stack these effects together, but we can stylize this effect even further by adding a stroke effect. So I'm going to go towards the offset composition and I'm going to add a uh, stroke effect in layer styles and I'm going to set the size to 5, the color to black and then I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it for the other layers as well. Now let's just uh, bring the offset effect a couple of times and let's just offset them like this. And let's also center these compositions. Great. Now we can even create a sort of offset between these uh, layers by adding uh, another 
um, time remapping effect. And now since our animation is set on two seconds, I'm just gonna set this effect on two and I'm gonna add a loop out expression. And then I'm gonna pay, copy it and paste it for the other two layers. However, let's just make sure that it is set on here. Okay, it's not fixed. So let's just add a keyframe and let's just remove them. And now what we can do is that we can push this effect for um, four frames and this one for two and this one for zero. So now we have a cool offset between each letter, which is nice. Now we can go into our final composition and we can call it main. And we can bring the stack. And now we can even install this effect further by going into stack. And in layer styles, we can add a stroke effect again. And then I'm gonna set his size to 30 this time. And let's just get the white color. And then let's just paste it for the other layers as well. And now let's get back to the main comp and let's add a tint effect. And I'm gonna change this color to, for example, a bluish color. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna add a new background. Now, in order to stylize it even further, I'm gonna add a rough edges effect. Let's set the borders to a number such as 25. And let's just set the complexity to six. So we have a chunky borders. And then what we can do is that I'm gonna go towards the asset panel and then I'm gonna bring the texture and I'm gonna set its mode on add. And let's just use the track map option to track it to the stack as we only need to show the inside of this layer. So I'm just gonna add a hue and saturation effect and let's just push it all the way to minus 100 for having a gray texture. And let's just bring back the second texture. I'm gonna set this mode to multiply. And also I'm gonna make it on the stack comp. However, let's just add a levels effect. Let's just decrease the uh, white channel and increasing the gamma channel. Now, lastly, let's bring the third texture and let's set it on add and let's just add the levels effect again. Well, on the last step, don't forget to use the track mat whip to track mat the texture into the stack. Now, here we are at the end of this video and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave out a like and subscribe to the channel as it would help me out a lot. Thank you so much. Goodbye.